Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. We're working with the slide animation. So when I hit the animate button, we're seeing this go in and out. We want to make it so the panel does the same thing. And we'll have to take advantage of the layout constraint that set our edge along the bottom. So that's going to be in the interface designer. So that is in your main.storyboard. So just jump over into that code file or interface file. And in here, you need to select this bottom UI view. This is a panel click on it and there's this bottom constraint. Now it's a little bit hard to click on. It's very tiny. You're going to click on that. Now what we're going to need to do is open the assistant editor. That's the top right corner, the Venn diagram icon that we're going to see here. And we want to actually connect to the code. Now it's in a manual mode along the very top. We can select this, switch it over to automatic, and we should see our code file. Now what I want to do is I want the the constraint here. So I'm just going to drag this over. You're going to do a right click or a two finger click. It's a little challenging um, from this tiny hitbox. If you click it wrong, it might not work, but hopefully if you can set it up, it'll work. Uh, and another option, if you are having trouble connecting the constraint is to drag from the icon here. And that is from the document outline. All right. So this is a two finger click and drag and you can use a trackpad or you can use a mouse and just right click and drag. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. This is our bottom panel constraint. I'll go ahead and just add that. Now what this allows us to do is to modify that value so that we can cause a nice animation. Now again, if you're having trouble here, all I want you to do is come over to this document panel. There's this little slide out. You can click this. And then all you're going to do is you're going to double click or two finger click and you're going to drag. Now, this is a really far distance for me to drag. So what I do is I keep my middle finger down, I lift my index finger, and then I use my index finger to get all the way over to the side here. And then I can get it and I can connect it. So that's the other way to connect it. And then you just let go and it will either insert or connect depending on how you're doing it. Okay, so if I just drop right here to insert, you'll see the pop up and you enter it again. Now you only want to do this once. So just make sure you have it working. All right. So with that, we can go ahead and use this. Now, at any point, you can also run into an issue where your app will crash. And if that's the case, you need to right click on something and remove a constraint. So in this case, if you rename something, just right click on it and remove it. Now it can be for an auto layout connection or it can be for a, a label connection or something like that. If you want to learn more about that, I've got an iPhone course that teaches you the basics of auto layout and really helps with identifying the common problems. All right, so let's get back to animating this. I'm going to switch back to a single view. So I'm going to select the view controller on the left and I'm going to click on the button next to the Venn diagram in the top right. Once we do that, we can now modify this new attribute. We added the attribute right up here. It's called a bottom panel constraint. If we go ahead and type that down here on the show button, what we want to do is we want to push that whole thing up. So let's say self dot panel bottom panel, sorry, bottom panel constraint dot constant. Now this one it's going to be a different value. So you can't go on the negatives here because it depends on the relationship. It depends on who is related to what. So when the button is related to the view, that's going to be a different relationship than if the view is related to the button. So you're going to have these differences here. Now for this, I want to move it, but I don't know which way yet. So what I'll do is I'll just test, okay, let's go 100 here, and then let's go negative 100 no, we probably don't want to do that. Probably like 20 down here. Now, if we remember, we actually used a negative value for this bottom button constraint, but that's not necessarily going to apply to how we've set up the constraint in the interface builder. So if we hit the animate button, okay, so one of those worked. Actually, they both worked, except they're in the wrong places. So... It's, it's not quite what we want. And so now what the issue is, we want a little bit of a, a difference here in height. So we need an eight point, sort of like we did along the top, we need to move it up an additional eight. So what I can do is for our position, 100 was actually a pretty good guess. And 
if we really break that down, it's 80, for, 80 points for the size of the button, and then it's gonna be 20 for the margin. So I got lucky and I just typed this number. And then what we want is this eight padding. So let's go ahead, redo this, and see what happens. So I'll hit the Animate Auto Layout button. It goes away initially, and now it comes back on. And then it goes back down. So that's great. Now what we wanna do is we want to make it so that this doesn't animate away initially. We really want it to come on initially. So that means we need to change some of these constraints. So that was pretty easy. We created a constraint here. We hooked it up. We then modified the value. We play with the values a little bit. This is something that you'll have to play with. Now, if you have a different app or a different screen, just start playing with some of the values. Use some of the, the known constants that you have, and you can figure out where things need to be in order to move around. Okay, so that is going to push our button up, and then it's going to pull it back down. So let's now think about this. We want the bottom panel constraint. That's fine, but we don't want the, the button to be on screen initially. We want, want it to be off screen. So let's turn it off initially. So we'll say it's false. And then we also need to make sure that it's off screen. And we're gonna actually do this all in our view did load method. So let's scroll up to our view did load. All right, so we want this to initially have the button off screen. So off screen, and we want it to be invisible because we want it to come onto the screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say button two dot alpha is equal to zero. That's gonna make it invisible. And then to get it off screen, we need to set the constraint. So the constraint is bottom button constraint. It's constant is what we set. And we want this to be something like 100, which is gonna push it off the screen. That's sort of what we did down below. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we should see that our button is initially off screen. Now, if we hit the Animate Auto Layout button, we see that it comes on screen and fades in and fades out. All right, so it's doing exactly what we want. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna make it so the Add button actually makes this button appear programmatically. So by starting out, we wanna make sure that we can see the button because if you can't see the button to work with, it makes it really slow to actually develop. So we see the button now, and now we wanna add the logic that's gonna go back now and make it invisible. So the first step in that is to make sure that we set the button one.alpha to zero. So now when we start the app, we won't be able to see the button. Adding button doesn't do anything, so we have to add a logic for that. Now we can just tie this logic off using the alpha value itself. So let's scroll down and you should find your add button press. In here, we're gonna do similar logic to what we did down below, except we're gonna do all the animation stuff right in line. So let's start with just getting the basics working. We wanna make sure that we can change the alpha based on what its current value is. So if we say, if button one dot alpha is equal to zero, that means it's invisible, then we wanna change it so that button one dot alpha is now visible. Okay, so setting it to one will make it visible. Otherwise, it's visible, we wanna make it invisible, so we will go ahead and do the reverse. So this is to hide, and this is to show. All right, so if it, we can't see it, we wanna show it, and if we can see it, we wanna hide it. Now, this is sort of a building box. Anytime you're working on animations, just getting the basics working before you add the animations is important, so we test that, it works. Next step is to add the animation code. So that's uiView.animate with duration. I'm gonna make this one a little bit more punchy. So we'll do a 0.3. And the animations, I just press tab, enter, and we'll then go ahead, grab this code. I'll cut it and then I'll paste it right up top. Now, when we look at this, it now is complaining about the self. So we just need to put self in front of the button one alpha code and that will fix those issues. So pause the video and catch up if you need to. And now let's test it. We hit add button and we see that the animation is going to show and hide our button. It's animating over 300 milliseconds and we can see that. Now we hit the animate auto layout and that's animating the bottom. All right, so that's how you can animate with auto layout. 
In the last video, what I want to show you is how you can use physics to make this a little bit more interesting. So we're currently dealing with a linear animation. It's sliding up with linear speed, it's sliding down with linear speed. That's actually not as interesting as when you have physics and you have springiness. That can make it so it's a nonlinear movement, which is actually more appealing to your eye because that's pretty much how things move in real life. And so that gives it a little bit more life and we'll get started with that in the next video. Hey, this is Paul Sol. Real quick, I want to interrupt you. You're watching this tutorial on YouTube, and I actually have a course with all the source code, all of the video files that you can actually download. So what you need to do is just jump on over, click the link, and you can jump into this course. It's free. It's going to show you how to animate using auto layout in your iPhone apps with Swift. So if you're enjoying this, go ahead, click the link, and jump into the course. It's free and you can get started with building a nice animation using auto layout.